we're running LinkedIn ads, but we're not trying to convert people. We're trying to teach them about our product. We're trying to put out a thought leadership video or something like that. We run those LinkedIn ads. People watch the video, but they never click on it. They never convert. Maybe it's a customer story from you know Coca-Cola that had success implementing your product and you're giving that to your other enterprise customers. And then, you know, 37 days later, the director of IT who saw that set, sees the problem that you were talking about that Coca-Cola solves inside of their business and then goes to Google and searches your brand because they remember it and they convert. Attribution software will give 100% credit to organic search in that instance. And companies will think, okay, now we need to, the LinkedIn ads aren't working. Let's stop doing that because there's no attribution to it. And what we should do is we should take all of that money and we should double down on SEO. The thing that people need to recognize is there are certain places where people funnel to buy stuff. When people are funneling to buy stuff, whether the, the legitimate first touch was probably not Google, it was me seeing that video, it was me talking to you and you saying, Typeform's great, you should try it. And then later I go back into Google and I search for it and I get it. People funnel through Google to buy stuff, so Google gets way more credit than it deserves, in both in organic and paid, right? So if I want to assess the deep, the um, the success of that LinkedIn video that I'm giving to directors of ITs, the success metric is how many of the directors of ITs consumed the full video. You okay. get those analytics, and you and it can tell you whether or not the the video is moving the needle towards your goal. And the goal of that campaign is that people know that Coca-Cola uses your product and got this result, like. And so everyone thinks that you need to go from first touch point to conversion. And I like breaking it down because there's a lot of things that people need to know about you and your company before you do something. And so I think it attribution in general restricts marketers to only do certain things that are easily measured. And so you'd never see a marketer do invest money to do what we're doing right now. It'd be very hard to, once we put this video out and put it into a podcast, it'd be very hard to quantify directly the impact of this for a CFO. Right? You don't see people leveraging influencer marketing, which is arguably the most effective thing to do right now in B2B SaaS because it's non-transactional and difficult to measure like an attribution software would want it to. And so um, marketers get restricted to what I call capturing demand, which is getting people that are already solution aware and looking to buy something. And my belief is that marketers that win in the future, and there's plenty of companies that are winning right now, need to create demand, need to build the brand way above when someone's looking for you, right? And people think about this like, you can think about it like Salesforce, but I like thinking about it a lot more like a company that's Series A, that not a lot of like, it's Salesforce can hide behind their brand forever. They can do no good marketing over the next 10 years, and they're still going to continue to grow. It, they won't feel it for a very long time because the brand's been established and the product is good. But for a Series A company, you don't have the luxury of a Salesforce level brand. And so you need to be more smart about how you get into the market, drive your narrative, create demand for your product, build affinity to your company. Um, and I think those are things that marketers today aren't incentivized to do because of attribution. In this lecture of the Demand Generation Masterclass, Chris shared how attribution restricts marketers to only do those things that are easy to measure. Also, attribution software often gives Google credit for things that it maybe doesn't deserve, like that first interaction that someone had with your brand through your content on social media. On the last lecture of this masterclass, Chris focuses on precisely that, that first interaction and how to make it better. Click here to watch it now.